This is the His and Her Money Show, where we talk about managing money, marriage, and everything in between. Now, here are your hosts, America's number one money couple, Talent and Ty McNeely. Welcome back to another edition of the His and Her Money Show, brought to you by Policy Genius, where you can find a free five minute assessment tool to help you figure out all of your assurance needs. Just head over to hisandhermoney.com/slash policy genius. We are so glad that you are here with us for another fantastic episode. We're tackling a topic that kind of strikes a nerve for a lot of people. We're going to be talking about retirement today. And for a lot of folks, it's like this big question mark hovering over them. Are they saving enough for retirement? How do I save for retirement? All of that Mm -hmm. is going to be answered on today's show because we want to make sure that you are fully equipped, fully educated, and fully empowered to make the decisions necessary to have financial success, not just today, but for years to come. Yeah, you know, and I know this uh, from my past professional experience working in the financial sector that a lot of people just would rather avoid the conversation because they feel like they won't be prepared when retirement comes, that they won't have enough money left, but they don't realize that before you know it, hey, retirement stage, whatever age that is, you know, however that looks like, it will be here. So you can't stick your head in the sand. You must get as much information as possible. And I'm so excited to talk to Roger Whitney on today because I think that he's going to share a lot of information that will, you know, put us in the right direction. Yeah, he's known as the Retirement Answer Man, and he even has a podcast with the same name. So we knew that he would be the one to help us put some answers to all of these questions. So let's get Roger on the line so we can dig into his great advice. Hey, Roger, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hey, guys, how are you doing today? We're super glad that you made some time to come on the show today because you, sir, are the retirement answer man. And we know that plenty of people in our audience have plenty of retirement questions that they need answers to. So we're glad that you are available to come on and answer some tough questions about retirement. But before we get into that, can you take a moment and introduce yourself to our audience? and let them know what you are all about. Sure. I, well, I'm Roger Whitney. I'm a uh, practicing financial planner. I'm a partner in a advisory firm of about 10 people. I have two other partners. And for the last couple of years, I've been blogging and hosting a podcast, basically noodling publicly on all the retirement issues I'm dealing with every day. And since then, we've been taking questions from listeners and doing case studies trying to figure out how to create as good of life as we can. Awesome. Well, why don't we go ahead and jump right into this topic? What are some common mistakes that you have seen people make when it comes to preparing for retirement? Well, I think the biggest mistake is to think that retirement in the traditional sense is the only option. We all think of retirement like our parents or our grandparents, that we have to save this huge amount and then we move to Florida and we relax and play golf and do nothing for the rest of our Mm -hmm. lives. And I think that concept is really outdated and most of us still approach retirement thinking we have to solve for that. And unfortunately, well, actually, fortunately, we're living so long and we're so much healthier than any other generation during those older years that really we're going to be a lot more engaged and active than we think we are. So retirement is really changing. So I think that's the biggest mistake is we're approaching it like we were our grandparents. And I think that makes a lot of pressure for us. Yep. Can't argue with that at all. Along those same lines, are there some common myths about retirement out there that our audience should be wary of? I think so. The most common question I get is how much should I save to be able to retire? Like there's some mythical number that they have to save. So I think the first myth is that there's some retirement number that you have to hit so you'll be okay. And I think that there's a couple problems with that myth is one is it all depends on what kind of lifestyle you want, obviously. But two, it makes it a one-dimensional issue, which is all about saving and investing. And planning for your financial future is much more multidimensional than that. So I think that's one of the biggest myths is that there's just some retirement number 
And I could really go on and on about myths because there are a lot of misconceptions of how we approach the subject. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good one that you just hit on. I mean, this is constantly on people's minds. How do we figure out how much money we need to be putting away for retirement? Well, that's a really good question. You basically asked it in a different way, didn't you? You asked what that number is. (laughs) And I think, so I'm 48. So let me just approach it as a 48-year-old because I deal with this. But even if you're younger, it still becomes an issue is at 48, I have no clue what retirement's going to look like. I mean, I'm in the middle of living my life. If you ask me now, I would say I'm never really going to retire. I'm always going to be engaged doing something. So when we're trying to save for the future, really what we're trying to do is picture a teeter-totter, okay? And on one end of the teeter-totter is today, is your life today, and you're trying to live life to the fullest. And on the other end of the teeter-totter is that tomorrow, and that could be retirement, that could be 10 years down the road. When we're making decisions about how we want to live our life and whether we save and invest, we're always trying to balance between those two, maximizing our life today without sacrificing our tomorrow. And that's a constant juggle. So I think a better way for us to approach it is to have some long-term aspirations about our later years, but set a lot of very short-term sprints that we can see and sprint our way to making better financial decisions. And that's a lot easier to adjust. It's a lot more real to us because I don't know about you, but when I think about 10 years in the future, it's like looking into the fog. So I think a better way to approach that would be to set short-term financial goals and personal goals and keep sprinting and working at making good balance sheet decisions rather than trying to come up with some number and feeling like you're about to climb Mount Everest. So kind of keeping your illustration in mind, as people are setting these short term goals and sprinting their way towards them, are there certain vehicles that are better than others or that you recommend as for us to use as we are sprinting towards these goals? Well, I think the financial vehicles will come from what you're trying to accomplish. So obviously you want to maximize your tax deferred savings for so 401ks and IRAs. And then you want to maximize your tax free savings in Roth or Roth 401ks if you can do that. And you want to have a lot of excess cash, meaning emergency funds. So you have time to let those investments actually work for you because it's such a long term proposition. But I'll tell you in terms of those goals, My biggest recommendation for anyone is you want to set short-term goals in three areas of your life when it comes to thinking about retirement or thinking about the future. The first is you want to set goals in or sprints in your personal life. And those usually come in one or two areas, either investing in your relationships with your family and friends because that pays long-term dividends emotionally, but financially too, investing in your health, because that can pay, obviously, if you're going to be living till 90, say, you're definitely going to want to be healthy for that, right? It's probably going to be a lot more enjoyable. And then the second area you want to set sprints is in your professional life. And this is probably one of the best vehicles that people can invest in when they're thinking about the future is investing in their professional growth, whether that is actively getting more training so you become more marketable so you can get that promotion, whether it's networking, whether it's going back to school, whether it's starting a business, because the income that you generate is probably everybody's biggest opportunity to secure a better financial future. Roger, we know people personally, and I know that there are plenty of people in our audience who have a fear of retirement because they're not sure if they have enough put away and if they'll be able to retire. So, I mean, for somebody who's dealing with fear of retirement, how can they overcome that fear? Well, I think fear comes from uncertainty, right? Fear comes from not knowing. And there's a couple different ways of dealing with that. And I've dealt with younger people that are afraid of it. I've dealt with clients that they're 58 and they've made a lot of bad decisions and they're behind the eight ball. And at the end of the day, you basically just have to say, this is where I'm at. What is the first problem I need to solve? So today I did something a little unusual. I just got out of watching the movie The Martian, where it's this man who is stranded on Mars because his crew left him by accident and he has to figure out how to stay alive. And the way he talked about it, I mean, imagine that situation. You feel totally hopeless about your life. You have no food. How many months away from Earth? 
And the whole movie was about him after he got over the trauma of being left on Mars. Okay, what's the first problem I need to solve? And then what's the next problem? I think that's how we get over our fear is by taking that first step, whether it's starting to take your lunch so you can save a few extra dimes, whether it's paying off that first debt and using Dave Ramsey type steps, whether it's starting to track what you spend, just tracking what you spend so you start to understand where the cash goes. Whatever that first problem is, you want to take it into these little chunks. I think that's how we get over fear, and that really takes us from helplessness to empowerment. And now a word from our sponsor, Policy Genius. Hey, Jennifer, it seems that a lot of people avoid getting life insurance because they think that there is a high cost associated with it. Is that a fact? That is a fact. There was a study a few years ago, and it determined that people actually overestimate the cost of life insurance by about a factor of four. And so what's actually the truth is that for good plain term life insurance coverage. You could get good coverage starting as little as $10 a month. What we see on average for people who get, you know, around $500,000 of coverage for 20 year term, depending on age, that can be anywhere from 30 to $50 a month, which is certainly something within reach for a lot of families' budgets to make sure that the family is protected in case of worst case scenarios. To find out more details and to make sure that your family has the proper coverage that it needs, Head over to hisandhermoney.com slash policy genius. And now back to the show. I agree wholeheartedly. Can't disagree at all. Now, you've been in the financial planning sector for a while, helping people navigate their finances. So I'm curious to know, in your professional opinion, is it better for people to be working on retirement or getting out of debt or should both be happening at the same time? That is a little bit of dealer's choice. I say get out of all the bad debt first. So that's going to be the high interest debt. I am personally comfortable with someone working through the non-high interest rate debt while they're putting enough in their 401k to get whatever free money in terms of employer matches that they're doing. A lot of it depends on self-discipline. If someone just can't have the self-discipline, then you, you might as well get saving a little bit now within a 401k just so you're starting to put something away. But I definitely think getting rid of the debt, especially the bad debt with high interest, is important to get done as quickly as possible because that zaps your cash flow and it lowers the choices you have in your life. Earlier on, you kind of mentioned the importance of investing in yourself personally and professionally. So I'm curious, like one of my favorite ways to invest in myself is through reading. So do you have any good book recommendations for people who want to continue to learn more about preparing for retirement? Oh, Lord, I got tons of book recommendations. <laughs> the How of Happiness by Sonia Labomirsky. It doesn't sound like a retirement book, but she is a researcher in the University of California system who has a happiness lab and it really walks through what truly makes us happy. And it talks about, you know, nature versus nurture and where in our life do we have control over increasing our quality of life. And I think that is important because if we're not happy on the inside, it doesn't matter whether you're retired or not. And I think if you become more content in your life and realize the things that make you happy, you're going to be better prepared to save and invest and live a good journey rather than delaying pleasure for this ideal of retirement. Another good book is Choose Your Retirement by Emily Guy Birkin. And that is a very good down to earth with worksheets involved. So those would be the two books that I would recommend. If there's somebody tuned into the show right now who hears all your great advice and totally loves it, wants to take action, but is kind of overwhelmed by it. They say, I'm not a numbers person. I don't get this. It's kind of going over my head. I know I need to do something, but I don't know how to do it. How can they go about finding good, solid help to help get the ball rolling for them so that they can properly prepare for their retirement years? You know, that is really easy and really hard at the same time because there are plenty of people out there that are marking themselves to help you. And a lot of them are extremely competent and educated and trained to do so. The problem is it's sort of like trying to find a mechanic. It's how do you judge the skill until after you put your car in there and they work on it and it's either fixed or it's not and you had a reasonable price or not. The difficulty when you're dealing with a financial advisor is you're turning over your money and life decisions 
to an extent in looking for counsel and, and you don't know until after the damage is done. So what I did is I put together a worksheet called How to Find a Trusted Advisor, which is basically an interview outline to interview a potential financial advisor. Because what I've found over my 25 years of being a financial advisor is generally someone comes through word of mouth from a friend and people tend to do very little due diligence on hiring an advisor. So I put together a list of 15 questions that can hopefully help you avoid some of those mistakes. I can give you links to that so you can share that. Absolutely. And we'll be sure to have a link to that in the show notes, as well as links to the books that you recommended as well. Now, Roger, can you take a moment and tell our audience a little bit more about your website, rogerwhitney.com, and about all the great resources that they can check out when they get there? I spent about a year and a half figuring out what my purpose in life is now that I'm all grown up at 48. And this is it. So on my website, rogerwhitney.com, I have a retirement learning center where there's over 30 worksheets to help you make easier decisions in your financial life and start to make better decisions. And that's the home of my podcast, The Retirement Answer Man, where I give more common sense advice and how to start making those little decisions and how to set those sprints and how to cultivate more happiness and contentment in your life. And that's the hub, rogerwhitney.com. Awesome. We highly recommend that every one of you all head over to rogerwhitney.com and get yourself educated and prepared for retirement. Roger, we truly appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to help answer some common and tough questions in the area of retirement with our audience today. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, you bet. Be well, guys. That was good stuff right there. Oh, yeah. That was the type of information that we all could use. No matter where you currently sit, you're 20, you're 40, you're 60, retirement is a real thing. It's a real thing for each one of us. And we need to be making the decisions necessary in order to make sure that our retirement is a good one. Oh, yeah, yeah. And one of the myths, I mean, where people think that they have to have this magic number to be able to retire. And it's more that goes to it than just having this magic number. So I kind of like that. And I also like how he spoke about you may have to find ways to free up some extra cash, such as taking your lunch to work and things like that. So for some of you who may say, look, I can't plan for retirement. I can't fit it anywhere in my budget. Take your lunch to work. Even if you can invest a hundred dollars or put a hundred dollars aside every single month, that's doing something. Yeah. And I think that What he brought out, too, was that a lot of times when you think retirement, you don't think about it because you consider it to be long off Mm -hmm. in this far and distant land. And so his advice to us is to take small things and and break them into short term goals and sprint toward those goals and just keep doing that over and over. And if we do that, we'll be ready when that time comes. So it's time to take action, ladies and gentlemen. Don't just sit there and say, oh, that sounds cute. No, let's get to work. Mm -hmm. Let's secure our financial present as well as our financial future. That's right. Well, that does it for this episode of the His and Her Money Show. Don't forget, visit us over at our website at hisandhermoney.com. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash hisandhermoney. Here it is, no matter where you are on the road to financial freedom, the key is to start now. And finish strong. Thanks for tuning in to the His and Her Money Show. For more information on how to win with your finances, be sure to visit www.hisandhermoney.com.